Hi, hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Abhul Chaturvedi, and I'm pretty excited to speak about configuration in Serenite. I hope you loved how the way Serenite works. I have a, a very good glimpse on you know what are cool features in the last video. If you haven't watched that, please do watch that. And in this section, I will tell you uh, there is a class called configuration in Serenite that's going to help us to do all the configuration that we want. Right? Uh, let's say if you want to run your test in Firefox. Let's say you want to run your test in browser stack. You know how we are going to do this? Like, you know, normally we write a lot of code for this. Let's say you want to set your explicit wait times. Let's say you want to set uh, your page load uh, strategy, your page load time modes, right? How we are going to do all that in, in Selenium? You might be knowing how to do that in Selenium, uh, but in Selenium, it is it is pretty easy, right? Uh, so, so the first use case, let's say, uh, you want to basically run your test in Firefox. It's pretty simple, right? Configuration, there is a class called configuration and this browser and you have to set it to Firefox and that's it. You When you call open method, it basically spins up your Firefox. Even though it uses the same web driver manager under the hood, we don't have to write a lot of code here. And let's say if it is Chrome, as you, as you already know, you don't have to even mention configuration.browser equal to Chrome because by default, it's going to take and run it on Chrome. And let's say you want to do it in Safari. If you just need to tell it's Safari, that's it. As simple as that. And let's say you want to run your test in a grid or, or your, you have your Selenium grid up and running in localhost 4444, or you have your Selenium container running in 4444 localhost. How will you normally do that in Selenium? So we have to create decide capabilities we need to set the browser name. Uh, we need to, you know, call the remote web driver class. And then there is new URL. We will be confused where this URL package is coming from. No. Oh, and then you need to also handle the exception, malformed URL exception, which obviously, I don't know when will this will happen. So the, the code becomes very noisy and, and, you know, clumsy, right? So, but in case of Selenite, it's pretty simple, right? You said, the configuration uh, browser where you want to run and the re remote here basically indicates which which endpoint you want to point your test to. That's it. It basically understands uh, everything else, new remote web driver, URL, all the try catch exception handling, you know, everything is taken care of here. So you don't have to really worry about it. Let's say you want to run the same test in Chrome and browser stack. Uh, by default, your browser is Chrome, so you don't have to even mention it even if you mention it doesn't matter and then configuration dot remote and then give the browser stack you are as simple as that so you don't you are not even worrying about which implementation of web driver interface that you have to use here that is remote web driver you don't even have to think about it uh, so that's cool as it and now there are a lot of other configuration like i mentioned let's say you want to uh, do some timeouts uh, for example, in the previous video, I would have used uh, by finding the element Q and then I'm I'm telling, hey, wait for it to be visible. How about we didn't set any timeouts? By default, uh, how much time it will wait? Yes, by default, it will wait for four seconds. Uh, but if you want to customize this timeout, you can obviously override this method uh, here in the, the visible and then you can pass duration dot off seconds. But if you want to set it for all elements, it, it makes sense that you set it at the configuration level. You just mentioned timeout and this timeout will be used for all your should methods before even waiting for some element. It will wait for 20 seconds before checking for visibility or clickability or whatever uh, the explicit condition you want to do. And then let's say you sometimes you want to even pass certain capabilities in terms of let's say you want to run your test in browser stack or lambda test. You want to pass your custom capabilities to the methods, right? So in those cases, you you can basically create your capabilities and uh, and there is a browser capabilities uh, variable that you can you know send your capabilities to. And then let's say when, when you are uh, doing some testing, uh, your test is failing. So you don't want your browser to be closed. Uh, since driver.quit is not here, how you do it? So here, you just basically tell hold the browser open equal to true, which means whenever there is a test failure, this is for debugging purpose. Um, whenever there is a test player, it, it uh, test failed, it keeps your browser in open state. 
so that you can inspect the element and see, oh, this is what's missing. So this is a problem. I'll fix it now. So this is pre pretty cool in terms of helping you with the debugging things. And then sometimes let's say we are facing element not intercepted exception, element intercepted exception or whatever exception. And then we normally use JavaScript click, right? And then this is already available as a configuration. If you want all your clicks to be JavaScript click, you can enable this to true. But let's say sometimes you want it to be JavaScript click. We will see about that how to do it. There is something called as click options where you can choose what kind of click you want to do, whether you want to do normal click or the JavaScript click. So we will cover that in the future videos. Let's, let's say um, Selenite produces reports, uh, a text report by default. It is also easy to in, you know integrate this with Allure reports. But yeah, if you, if you want a custom reports folder, you can also do that. If you want your test to be run in headless mode, you can also do this. And then you can set your browser sizes. You can also set your page load timeout. And there are a lot of other configuration which you can have a, a, a very detailed look when you go into this configuration class, right? Now, let's say I'm not a big fan of setting up all these things in my code. And then you can basically create a selenite.properties inside SRC main resources or SRC test resources. If you have a selenite.properties, all these configuration will be basically loaded from this property files to the configuration class. You don't even have to uh, write a code like this. You don't have to put this here. You can rather uh, keep selenite.browser equal to Firefox here. It will automatically pick it up here, from here, right? That's as cool as what we want, right? It's almost similar to your log j, log for j properties or j unit properties. And then, even if you don't like that way, uh, let's say you want to pass it as a system variables, you can also do that by hyphen d selenite the timeout and then whatever the timeout you want. So a, a simple test might look something like this: Maven clean test hyphen d selenite dot browser equal to Firefox. So one thing that you need to keep in mind is when you are setting up via code, we normally tell configuration dot browser, but in all other cases we need to tell selenite dot timeout selenite dot browser the selenite is a prefix that you have to add everywhere that's all about it so this is pretty cool right um, i will also have a uh, i'll walk you through a little bit of uh, code here so if you notice there is a selenite properties which i have created under src test resources then basically this will be loaded automatically okay and then this is the configuration class that i am speaking about uh, where if you notice there are a lot of other things uh, if you want to set browser position, uh, page load, timeouts, page load strategy, uh, save page source, there are a lot of other things that you, you can always have a look at them. Uh, but by default, it, it looks for the configuration file that is present in selenite.properties. If you pass it from here, it will take that. Otherwise, by default, it will use Chrome. So if you pass browser size, it will take from here. Otherwise, by default, it uses here. So this is all the default values where, where this is all coming from. So if you want to have a look at these, please have a look at them. So this is all about the configurations. This will come pretty handy uh, because we'll be using uh, selenide in the coming videos. So uh, have a look at these classes. These are all very simple classes. And I'm sure you will uh, easily understand them. I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada, bye-bye from Mugan. Bye-bye.